you are a foodie or a fan of some chef on TV, you're gonna find this video difficult to watch. However, I do have a point of view that I want to express. So you have all the information you need if you intend to modify your lifestyle. Yes, OMAD will make you healthier and live a long life. However, some behavior modification is required. In this video, I'm gonna talk about eating habits, routines and customs, so stick around. You don't wanna miss anything. Hi, this is Juan Sarmiento. I have been eating one meal a day every day of my life for many years. As the science explains, this has many benefits for your health and fitness, both mental and physical. I call it a gift for everyone willing to adapt to it. But the very idea of fasting may sound intimidating for most, either because your working schedule makes it difficult or because your social and family relationships are built around mealtime. Celebrations are often associated with sumptuous meals at restaurants or large family gatherings around the dinner table on holidays. One of the most common excuses for not trying OMAD is that it may interfere with your social life. But it shouldn't really. Let's say that you have a special family gathering on Sunday and you expect a big meal. What is wrong with making that meal the only one of that day? There is really no reason why you should not have whatever you want to eat during that, your only meal. I fully expect a spike of insulin during my one meal. However, by the following day, ketosis, autophagy, and low blood insulin should be once again in effect. Let's say that, in that social event, you exceed the duration of your eating window. This is of no consequence in the long run. These changes you are making are to last you for the rest of your life. Some OMADers talk about a cheating day without any shame. Why not? Although I do OMAD every day of my life, I do not believe that its effects will be voided by a single cheating day. Others talk about having young children and making a point of eating with them as part of family life. Gathering around the dinner table is part of our food culture, perhaps for hundreds of years. Food is part of our appreciation of one another. In human history, during wars and famine, providing for those unable to feed themselves was a way to show our humanity. I remember being told to think about the poor when eating my meal to see how fortunate I was to be able to enjoy my meal. But in my lifetime, all of that has changed. It seems now that food is a pleasure rather than a necessity. Eating a sumptuous meal is often a reward we give ourselves. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy my one meal a day. I do eat my meal with my wife and we cook our meals together. Then we wash our dishes together. We also do our grocery shopping together. We do think of food as an important part of our relationship. But we also understand that food is fuel and we simply do not need that much energy. We have plenty of fat energy stored in our bodies. If you work from 9 to 5 or more, you probably have to accommodate a quick lunch in your schedule. Then, you may eat your main meal at dinner around 7 p.m. with your family. You just don't see any variation from that. Most people believe that the purpose of family gathering around a meal is to have quality time with your children. Can you think of ways to gather as a family and exchange ideas in some other way? I understand that we are in a food culture and that breaking these habits is hard to do. Take breakfast, for example. You see it as an essential part of life. You may think that skipping breakfast is a mistake because of the influence from advertisement. 
Did you know that breakfast is the most important meal of the day is a message from the food industry? Would you be surprised if I told you that breakfast in most countries are mostly carbohydrates? It turns out that carbohydrates are very addictive. See my previous video on the subject. This explains why we think we can't live without breakfast. After years without breakfast, I feel absolutely no inclination to eat anything that early in the morning. My recommendation has been to eat your OMAD early, at noon for example, because elevated insulin may suppress the production of growth hormone. Since growth hormone is mostly secreted at bedtime, eating in the evening may force you to miss out on this benefit. Eating a cafeteria lunch as your only meal of the day may not be appealing. So I understand that the choices are limited and you may simply have to find what suits you the best. I believe, however, that eating is only one form of quality time you may have with your family. I leave it up to you to figure out what is best for them and for you. Think about the benefits you may pass along to your children if they develop OMAD as a lifestyle. I won't discuss this any further until we have a clear understanding of the benefits of fasting in young children. For now, focus on the benefits to your own body and setting an example for them in the future. The main reason why anyone would go into intermittent fasting would be to reduce weight. Until the recent past, reduction in caloric intake has been used as the best approach to weight loss. The fear of the effects of cholesterol on heart disease has made doctors recommend a low-fat, low-calorie diet. I can tell you from my own experience of decades of progressively increasing weight that this approach only resulted in obesity for me. Yes, a low-calorie, low-fat diet only made me addicted to carbs. By the time I started OMAD, my meals always included potatoes, pasta, rice, and or bread. Often bread accompany my meals with other carbs. In fact, I continued to eat these carbs until 2018, even with OMAD. Although I reduced my body weight, I would have done it in a shorter time if I had cut my carbs as well. The message for new OMADers is, eat whatever you want, you will still reduce weight and change your life. Your addiction to carbs will fade away as you gain control over insulin. What about calorie cutting and longevity? Earlier studies in rodents showed an increase of up to 30% in lifespan when eating a low-calorie diet. When I read this, I was confused because that was not my own life experience. I understood that any human on a calorie-restricted diet eating three meals a day would have very little control over their natural cravings. Sooner or later, they will fall back into old habits but rodents would have no choice but to eat whatever they were given. A scientist would have few practical ways to feed a calorie-controlled diet to rodents. Normally, rodents are fed at libitum, which means they are given unlimited amounts of feed each day. So, how did they control their caloric intake? They reduced the amount of ration supply to meet their daily needs. Naturally, the rodents would eat whatever they were supplied in a shorter and shorter time. In essence, settling for an OMAD regimen. It seems like the longevity studies did not demonstrate that caloric reduction increases life expectancy. Rather, they showed that the increased life expectancy may be the result of OMAD, or some variation of intermittent fasting. Our society has evolved to be food-centric. We do not think that we could eat OMAD, which was normal for medieval and Roman cultures. It is unlikely that the hunter-gatherer culture from which we evolved would have eaten more than one meal a day. It is very likely that they ate less often than that. Then, with the advent of agriculture, we began to eat a carbohydrate-based diet. Restaurants nowadays, in order to increase profit margins, offer less 
and less protein content in their menus. Far from complaining, we go back and continue to eat the high carbohydrate meals. They have learned by the profit motives that people don't mind low protein meals and that their profit expectations are more easily met with high carbohydrate meals. We simply do not know or notice the difference. At first, I continued to go to my favorite restaurants, but in the end, I opted for staying at home and removed pasta, potatoes, rice, and bread from my meals. I wish I had done that earlier as OMAD would have cut my weight faster. I have been traveling a lot in the last couple of years, including the United States, Mexico, Spain, and Finland. These four countries, different in culture, customs, political tendencies, and even scheduled meals, have one thing in common. They have many obese people. Even my country of birth, Venezuela, which has been in economic crisis for decades, has many obese people. Venezuela has not always been like this. I remember as a child that there were not that many obese people in the streets. I remember that we only had desserts on Sunday and that our meals always had a protein and a salad. You would think that in third world countries obesity would be less prevalent. It is not. The countries I have visited have these things in common. 1. The high carbohydrate content in their diets. 2. The three or more meals in a day. 3 the bombardment of advertisement for foods and sweets. The scientific understanding of obesity worldwide is changing. I believe that intermittent fasting and OMAD in particular are here to stay and our habits will change in the years to come. One last point I wanted to make is that you probably noticed that I do not mention in any of my videos what kind of foods or diets I eat. I think that would be counterproductive. If I told you what I ate, you'd probably try to emulate it exactly. But that is not what you should do. The only rule to follow is eat within a restricted amount of time, once a day. The shorter, the better. You can have your meal early or late. The earlier, the better. What the source of macronutrients is best for you is entirely up to you. Reduce your carbs and increase your protein according to your needs. If your goal is to gain muscle, increase your protein. If your goal is to lose weight faster, reduce your carbs. Please watch my previous video on this subject. We have to admit that food is at the center of our lifestyle. There is no reason why OMAD should interfere with that. However, in order to adapt to OMAD, I do insist that you should try and sustain it for 21 days in a row. Once adapted, find the approach that best suits your family life, your work schedule, and your exercise routine. I have found that for me, health takes precedence over any other consideration. With OMAD, you will find that your life will change forever, as it did mine. This is why I always repeat that life is looking up. Thank you.